Hey, let's talk about this uh, blockbuster trade that uh, went on uh, yesterday that uh, people are buzzing about. And we thought we'd go right to an expert on this one who has forgotten more about this topic than we'll ever know. <laughs> and that is Connor McKnight. He is your uh, he's your pre- and post-game host on WLS. And he, he knows the Sox inside and out. He's willing he to share for a nominal fee. Connor, good morning. Good morning, guys. I can uh, I can confirm, however, that the All Star break was not a month and a half long. Though I hope everyone enjoyed the four days that they could. <laughs> okay. Breaking news. It just seemed like a month and a half to me. I guess. Fair, fair. Now, uh, as a Cub fan uh, and uh, two Cub fans here, how fired up should we be about this? I, I think you should be pretty fired up. I, I, I've said a couple of times now since the trade happened that Jose Quintana is one of the best fighters that I can uh, that I've seen pitch in a while. I think, you know, when he, his first six weeks for the White Sox this year, his first you know, 10 starts or so weren't great. And to watch him work through what he was having issues with, a lack of fastball command, to watch him still give literally everything he could for his club to stay in ballgames, keep his team in it, was impressive. Then to see him fix the issues, to get back to being Jose Quintana that we've seen him be over the last four or five years with the White Sox was impressive. The way it looks to me, that Cubs team needs somebody, a steady somebody in that rotation in order to right the ship some for the second half of the season. Wouldn't be bad if they started to hit a little bit too, but Jose Quintana is about the, the most tireless worker and, and biggest fighter that you could ask for on the mound, and he's pretty darn good too, probably one of the top 15 pitchers in baseball. Uh, hey, Connor, how you doing, buddy? Uh, doing well. Good, good, nice to hear. Um, Quintana had a tough uh, start of the season. Uh, I've heard yeah. some people are attributing to the fact that he had the trade bait hanging over his head for the entire season. Do you fall into that? Uh, do you believe that? Do you think that was part of the, the part of the reason he was struggling? You know, I mean, it'd only be human to, to have some of that affect you to some point. But you got to remember too, though, Joe. Like, you know, there, there were two starts in there where he goes eight innings and gives up two hits. Uh, against the, uh, I think it was the Yankees at the time, and he just stuck in another tough one against the Twins um, two weeks after that. So it's not like it's not like there weren't any kind of good signs. There were, which is what made the first six weeks kind of weird. I, I think what what happened, we had a little bit of a mechanical issue that Q and Don Cooper, the White Sox pitching coach, were working through. I think uh, I, I think another issue too has to be what we've seen with the baseball this year. It is a different baseball. Mm -hmm. um, good luck getting Jose Quintana to admit any kind of uh, blame on that. He's going to put it all on himself because that's what he does. He's a pro. But I think we're I think we might be looking at a different type of baseball uh, this year, and I think that's affecting pitchers and, and home runs a little bit. Maybe you could you could be the perfect guy to dispel or, or confirm this notion that uh, people have had for the longest time that the Cubs and Sox just don't want to do business. You know, they're, they're, well, what was the uh, what was the line from Jed Hoyer that there'd be a tax in trading with a foe in the same city? Hey, uh, right. hey, kind of real quick before you, you you answer that, I do want to play a clip uh, for you. Uh, we talked to David Kaplan uh, in early May uh, about some sports stuff, and I, I actually asked him about Jose Quintana. You want to play that, Christian? Jose Quintana, does he finish the season as a White Sox? He does not. Ancillary question, does he finish the season in a Cubs uniform? No, there is zero chance. I don't care. I love Rick Hahn, but he was on my show the other day, and he said, oh, we'll deal with all 29 other teams. That is complete garbage. There is no chance they are making a deal with the Cubs. So, okay, so, whoops. I mean, not, to, not, to, not to pile on Cap or anything there. But, but I mean, we are. But we are a little bit. I mean, Cap knows what's going on in the city. So, I mean, that was obviously a, a, a thought that went through that the Cubs and Sox just don't deal with each other. They hadn't dealt with each other, what, 2006, I think they traded some relievers. Is that correct? Yeah, Neil Cox went from uh, the White Sox to the Cubs for Carlos Vasquez and David Artsma. Okay, so is, is was that just it has just never happened before because it hadn't been right, or are things changing, or do the two teams now kind of uh, understand each other and are willing to deal? It, it hasn't happened much. I mean, I, obviously the, the Cubs sent Ron Santo to the White Sox in '73. That was a, you know at the time Santo was at the end of his career. Steve Stone went to the Cubs in that trade, so big names for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, you've had a couple of trades, about a dozen or so, in the last you know century of baseball, but not a lot. And I think what's been interesting about this is I, I think we all kind of wondered whether or not this tra a trade like this would happen um, because of two factors. One is there are 29 other teams in baseball, and while almost every single one of them would want Jose Quintana, putting the odds on just you know the one that happens to be in the same city is matching up the best would be kind of long odds. Thing is. They, they did match up really well. I mean, it's, it's why this thing happened. I, I think the second part of this, too, is 
the White Sox have, as a front office, as an organization, have, have dedicated themselves to this process. You can't, you can't do this halfway. You can't do what they're doing, rebuild and, and acquire young talent only just a little bit and then see what happens on the backside. It doesn't work. You will fail if you don't commit to this. And I think, I think what this trade has probably driven home to a couple of people who, who hadn't seen the process, who hadn't seen you know, the work done, that, that they are committed wholeheartedly to it. And it's going to cause a little growing pain at times. Cubs fans saw that exact thing with a lot of bad baseball teams. But, you know, I, I think the structure of this is a little different than the way the Cubs did it. Um, but I, the, the dedication to it is the exact thing. Uh, I've also noticed uh, White Sox fans are traditionally known as maybe not um, as, uh, as patient, as understanding as, as a lot of other fans in, in baseball. So in this trade I, I've seen on Twitter be kind of accepted in, in the White Sox land. Has the perception changed? Do they, do, has, has the White Sox fans seen what happened on the north side and are accepting and, and want that to happen? Are they totally down with a three-year rebuild of, of 60 win seasons and top draft picks? No, I, I wouldn't take one group and ascribe one emotion to right. it, but I think by and large, you know, I, I really do think that there is an understanding and, a, and an acceptance, I guess, it sounds a little bit more defeatist than it ought, but an acceptance of, of what the process and path is here. Um, I, I think when you trade a guy like Chris Sale first, right, when, mm-hmm. when that's the guy that moves you, okay, we're doing this. this is what's up, here's what happens. Yohan Mankata, the best prospect in baseball, comes back. Michael Kopech with a 105-mile-an-hour fastball comes back. I think, I really do think the returns that they're getting in these trades, you know, players who are in, in the industry lauded by, you know, universally um, has helped quite a bit. It, it really does seem that the trades have been made uh, and made well. But I do think that, you know, that, that a path has been blazed, right? Like we've seen teams do this before, whether it's, you know, whether it's the A's seven or eight years ago. Um, trying to go through this kind of process and getting themselves into a wild card game. The Royals have done a similar process, um, though they, you could probably argue, lucked into it a little bit more than purposefully did it. Uh, and, I, and I think the Cubs and Astros have absolutely committed themselves to this process. And I think the fact that that's been working uh, to the tune of a World Series and what looks like it's going to be uh, the best record in the American League this year, I, I think you know it is kind of a little bit more, it's easier to swallow. Well, it, it, yeah, it's got to be one of those where you, you look over and go, wow, those fans went through, you know, four or five years of some serious pain, but boy, look at the joy they're reaping now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I, and I think, you know, the way that the way it's different for, for the team on the north side and, and this one here is that there's, remember when the Cubs were moving pieces, they had nothing to move. It was Ryan Dempster for Kyle Hendricks, and they didn't even want Kyle Hendricks first, you know? Mm-hmm. It, these You're moving Chris Sale and Jose Quintana and Adam Eaton and... You know, Rick Hahn, the general manager of the club, has said, yeah, there is a little bit bittersweet to know that we didn't get it done with these guys. But once you start to trade some of that talent, you're going to get premier young players in return. And I think that's what the White Sox are getting in Eloy Jimenez for sure. Uh, the Cubs saw uh, their fortunes tur- turn in uh, in 2015. It's kind of when they all, all, all the, the work paid off. Uh, the White Sox have gone from a, a, a really, really bad farm system to, uh, would you say, the best farm system now in the... In the yeah, I, I think it absolutely is right up there with anybody else. So when, uh, when, will, when do you project the 2015 version of the Cubs happening for the White Sox? That is the million-dollar question that I've been trying to spend my month-and-a-half-long All-Star break to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think it's going to be, I, I think we're going to start to see a player or two in that, in that class, in that first class, Toward the end of this season, um, Yoan Mankata seems, if he's healthy, he seems ready enough to me. Uh, of course, I'm not the one who gets to make those decisions, and I'm not the one who has to pay that paycheck at the end of the six-year arbitration term. So, you know, that's going to be up to the White Sox, too. Uh, but I do think that a guy like uh, Rinaldo Lopez and Yoan Mankata are, are close um, and, and might come up once, you know, all the roster uh, ramifications kind of go away. I think a guy like Lucas Giolito has been really interesting, but would benefit some, I think, from finishing a season down there in the minor leagues. Uh, and, and we'll see. You know, the guys they've acquired recently, the, the Eloy Jimenez's and Dylan Cease's, they're probably a little bit farther away, both of them playing in high A baseball. So I think you're, you know, you're probably on a two-year plan for that. But you know, I do think that the horizon is, is pretty quickly getting a little brighter for the White Sox because they've been able to, with, like we talked about with the, with the incredible talent that they are trading, 
getting guys that are a little bit closer to the to the major leagues than than what other rebuilds like the Astros or the Cubs have done before. He's Connor McKnight. He's your pre and post game host on WLS. You can follow him on Twitter as well at C One McKnight. You'll get some great insight there, and uh, along with a, a lot of other great things that you as a fan can use. Connor, thanks a lot for taking time out of what we know is a busy day to to, to join us. Absolutely, guys. Happy to do it.